Okay, uh, I want to thank everybody who's downloaded, who's listening to this, um, and that might be like three people. But anyway, thank you for listening to the Jake Williams Show. I got a very special guest with me right now in the studio, and by studio I mean the basement of my house. It is a guy I've known my whole entire life. He's my cousin, one of my best friends, always a great collaborator, Luke Alexander, Mo- Luke, Luke Alexander Moyer. Luke, say hello to the people. Hello. Ha. What are you doing? Ha. He's playing with a scab on his knee. So let's <laughs> let's get right down to it. Um, Luke, what are what are the? Will you stop? I'm trying to interview you right now. I don't listen. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is? Uh, okay. If you had to pick um, some inspirations in your life, who would be the inspirations that would make you? Want to keep on keeping on and, and do the things that we do together, or anything in particular. Well, Jake, uh, it's kind of a tough one, but I've given it a lot of thought, and uh, I'd have to narrow it down to just a few famous names. Uh, one would be Gandhi. Uh, two would be Jesus Christ. Uh, three would be John Lennon and Sylvester Stallone. Is that it? Just those those four. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Jesus, obvious reasons, because you know you, you're you're a Christian man. That's an obvious reason. But uh, why Gandhi? Uh, because <laughs> he because he could he <laughs> stood up for his beliefs. I guess is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's how you, how you. I mean, he's just a cool guy. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> so, John Lennon, um, and we, we're definitely going to have a long conversation about the Beatles later on in this podcast. But why, why John Lennon? Is it because he imagined that there was no heaven or no hell below us? Yes, indeed, he was. He was a very, very uh, great man in the music industry, and he was the stepping stone that is music and all that it is today. And without him and his bromigos of the Beatles, there would not be any inspiration for the better music of mankind. All right, now Stallone. Because he's a badass. Actor. Rocky, dude. Rocky. Rambo. Rocky. Expendables. I, you don't even have to explain that one to me. <laughs> okay. Um, so what? When did you decide that you wanted to start making YouTube videos? Because I know that Tommy and I was also a friend of the show. He's a guest on the show. Um, we we had done our own thing, our own little projects, and we had done some videos and things like that. So was it us that made you want to do that, or did you already have those ideas? And then you're like, okay, so if those guys can do it, obviously, you know, I can do it too. Uh, when 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 did you? decide that you wanted to do it well after i hit puberty jake uh my mind my mind started developing a little bit more and uh it started brainstorming and hatching eggs of ideas that are what i kind of had and the initial uh birthing of the ideas is when i saw and uh, found the abilities that you guys have i started to brainstorm and uh piggyback off of what you guys already had going and then we all just came together and started what is us now today i'm gonna be honest the reason why i wanted to collaborate with you um i was jealous because uh after tommy and i did our videos and he went off and did those videos with you i was jealous i i I thought they were funny they were hilarious um they're actually on the youtube channel the one up productions it's two e's on the all one word, no capitals. <laughs> Shamelessly promoting that. But when I saw the um, Mario and Luigi go to Grandpa's video, uh, no, it might have even been one. That, no, it was the one before that um, when Tommy interviewed um, the character Grandpa. Laughed my ass off. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. And then I got so jealous. Not one because I had no idea that Christian could do that. Could actually be funny. <laughs> Two. And it took. It took a lot of time and. Oh, I know. We, we were drilling, efficient. drilling the lines into his head. He had simple one-liners and still couldn't remember it. 
And uh, we'll get more on Christian in a f- little bit about how hard he was to work with when we were shooting our movie that we did together that nobody <laughs> had seen. Um, so, so yeah, then eventually we kind of collaborated. Um, is there any one video that is like probably your crowning achievement? The one that you're the most of, that regardless of what you do or we do in the future, is there still just one that you're absolutely proud of? Hands down, the American Fro. Not the movie, the like the Uno. 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 American Fro Uno. Christian's in studio. Recording a podcast. Me. <laughs> I interview people, Christian. It's what I do. You want to hear a funny joke, editor? Well, then put take the mic, man. Take the mic. Okay. So, <laughs> heard it from Reddit today, but you'll enjoy it because it's a wrestling one. Did you know The Rock used to be addicted to heroin? Until one day, he finally decided to lay the smack down. <laughs> but uh here all week guys christian's my roommate sometimes on the show as a comedian but <laughs> he's gonna go do some laundry so anyway back to luke um <laughs> why is american fro uno your crowning achievement right now because it's the best thing we ever did and the fact that it's a, uh, what, seven-minute video, and it took us seven hours to uh, edit. <laughs> um, it was probably because that it was uh, what it was. It was hilariously stupid, and uh, it was probably the cleanest, most uh, 100% kid-friendly movie you could ever make. And yet... Our par- well, my parents and Tommy's parents were so pissed about it because it was apparently vulgar and just disgusting. Funny, funny story about that, though, is like that's when I knew we had something. The minute that we offended our parents and they were upset, that's the minute I knew this is this is something. This you know, like it's it's like when you put a parental advisory, like when they had that big thing in the '80s with rock and roll, and they're like, ah, but they. They're like they're gonna slap a parental advisory sticker on it. They thought they would like stop sales. That shot them straight up because then the, the musicians knew, hey, parents aren't gonna like this, but everybody else is, you know, kind of thing. So that's where I kind of thought we um, got into it. Our parents are very uh, well. Luke's parents and Tommy's parents are very um, conservative. Is that the proper word, Christian? And we never swore in at all in in the video it, the the bleeps and blops and bloops were uh added in you could see the pauses in our speech to add in a beep because we thought it'd be funnier that way and um they still thought we swore and cussed and thought we were the devil's children <laughs> well it's probably the uh, whole uh porno uh reference we made about suck it hard <laughs> <laughs> which was pretty clever, by the way, because most of which was a lot of improv, and yeah, Tommy kind of just Tommy took it and ran with it, which was freaking hilarious. Um, so anyway, we mo- we're moving on here. So you did the you did the Mario and Grandpa stuff, um, and then I eventually sat down. Like we had a little, we had these little meetings. Um, so then eventually I sat down and said, hey, let me get on this. we got some ideas. And it all happened one day. We were hanging out at Luke's place, and um, he had an Afro and American flag plants, and I just said American Fro, and then it, there was nothing of it. And it, it just became what it is. I mean, he was going through my underwear drawer, found them, and kind of just had a baby. And there we came up with the idea and took it, and it became what it is. And it started to get there with this new one that we're making, the reboot. Look for it, July 2015. <laughs> it might actually be 2015 when I finally get this up because I'm lazy. But uh, <laughs> what in, in my head at least, I wanted to make like an American kung fu movie. It didn't end up that way with Uno and Dos and uh, the pick, but I think that's where we're getting now. And like you and I had the same idea. We wanted to make a kung fu movie, and we we're like, what could be the most outrageous thing? Um... What if, if the was there something when we were making it you think like when we were making it did you think it was going to catch on did you think anybody was going to like it did you think as we were filming it that it was the best thing you ever done 
I thought it was the best thing. I mean, not necessarily like the best thing we've ever done. I didn't know at the time that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. I was just doing it because I enjoyed doing it and hanging out with my bros. And uh, I was just doing it to do it. I didn't expect it to be what it was and how good I thought it was. Granted, nobody actually ever saw it, but yeah. <laughs> Well, that's because they had the whole copyright issues of oh, yeah. YouTube, and they kind of, I don't know what that whole deal was. But if you like, you can check it out on my Facebook. That is Luke Moyer. The unedited one with that cool sound. Um, a lot, that's, I'm glad you brought this up earlier. American Fro, to me, what made it so special is, I want to say, what, 90% of it is completely improvised dialogue. We didn't have an outline, didn't have a plot. We just literally improvised the whole entire thing. Do you think we could ever... Because we're working on the script right now, which essentially is just going to be an outline. Do you ever think Tommy or Christian or even us would be able to work with an actual script for something like Fro? Or is it just better freeform? Um, as long as we have the situation and like the environment of what it's supposed to be, we can be able to just improvise the lines and just go from there. Because, I mean, if we got the situation of who's going to be fighting who, who's going to be doing what, and the essential essence of what it is, we can just uh, BS it and, you know, get it going. I think it's like that line in the pain and gain. We're so much better when we wing it. That's definitely the case. Because Tommy and uh, Christian cannot... Remember dialogue to save their life. Um, I didn't ask this before. I'm going to ask it right now. Where did you come up with the idea for Grandpa? Whose idea was that? Where, where did this come from? Well, we wanted to do... Tommy's idea was special interview. And we were just going to go and like basically interview random, random strangers. But we didn't think about it. And then I was like, well, Christian's like a short little old man. And I had a mustache, and he liked to wear mustaches because that was his thing at the time. I don't he's know. To grow a I really now. don't. Is he really? Now that he hit puberty, he's actually That's grown. great. <laughs> and like, well, I guess I just gave him a mustache, and he wore a old corduroy jacket and a BB gun, and that's where he invented Grandpa. And three fourths of the actual crazy old guy, Christian improv that. Like, he made all that up himself, and I was surprised, but... That's that's the thing, though. That's why I think it's successful, us not writing it down, because we all know each other so well that we can... Yeah, we can just ping ideas right off each other, and, and we'll get it, but... I, that's always bothered me. I always wanted to know who came up with Grandpa, because I'm so jealous that I didn't think of it. And, it, it's, it, and you know, but that's the thing, is... That's what I like about it, is we all can make these characters... And that brings me to this question. Why Why do you want to... Because I didn't know this about you when I first met you or talked to you, but you're kind of like me in a sense that you really have a passion for making this stuff and creating this stuff. What is it that makes you want to create things and, and have these characters and do these things like Fro and Grandpa and all this other stuff? What What is your inspiration? Why do you want to do that? It's the ability to become somebody that you're not. It's being able to become a character, take that, give them a background, give them a storyline, and completely just forget about who you really are, become this new person, and just escape who you are and become somebody else. And just run with it and like kind of go to a different situation. Understand how a different person would live. If you had an alternate yeah state, being yeah. like an alternate reality and being somebody else and living differently I, yeah i mean and the fact that like we could make these characters and then go to places like well we made the brad we made brad and randy and um we <laughs> went to Walmart and matching windbreakers and we're acting like bros. Things like that and and we just want to do that because we do it anyway. Why not, you know, put it on film, you know. See, i mean when I become, when I put on the windbreaker, I strap on the bandana, I become Brad. I am Brad. Well, look out for Brad and Randy. They're going to be in a project we're working on. We have a ch- just a lot of projects down the down the way. We just got to figure out which one we're going to do first because and there's so many ideas. And we actually need to kind of like 
this podcast. I had this idea to do this podcast a long time ago, and I'm finally doing it. So <laughs> it's just a matter of will and financial woe. I mean, we got to have a budget, but because <laughs> I'm doing this for free. Idiot. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, t- from my uh, self-loathing to um, Luke. Um, so where did the idea for a character in uh, American Fall Search for the Golden Pick, the one time you're actually on screen in that movie, uh, when did you come up with the idea for Tim, uh, is his name Ishkab- Ishbob? I think it's Tim Ishbob. Yeah. The Rabbi Wizard. Rabbi Wizard. Where does the idea for a Rabbi Wizard come? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, well, I had a wig, a mullet, a black mullet wig, and I put it on, and then I had a ye- uh, blonde, like, long rocker wig, and I strapped it on my chin, and I thought that I, I looked like a wizard, and... I was on, like, the kick of Jewish people at the time. I don't know why, so I became a rabbi and a wizard. And when aren't we you know, on a kick for Jewish people? That's I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but I just kind of said, ooh, my name's Tim, and I'm a rabbi wizard because I thought it was funny and, like, most unordinary thing possible. <laughs> Plus, you just wanted to be in the movie, and you needed a character. Yeah, I needed a character, and I just kind of pooped out a baby and there it was okay so i'm kind of hopping around in this interview so we're gonna go back to talk about american fro because that's always because we and we're kind of the same i mean we love that project so much it's kind of like our golden calf and we want to keep pumping ideas into that and push all our efforts to that so immediately after we did uno we did dose right um. Do so. Would you put Uno above Dose? Yes. Why is that? I don't know. Um. <laughs> I personally think the first one's funnier. I think the f- yeah, the first one was funnier. Uh. And I mean, I had a part in it. I got to be the the feared gangster Mickey Stone. So I mean, that might be why I like it more. Because I mean, the second one was funny. But Christian, I don't, I don't know. He was. <laughs> <laughs> he sounded like his age. I mean, he yeah, was like he was nine, old. ten years old in that video, and you could really hear. It. I personally think I liked the first one better. But I will say this though: I enjoyed the second one because there's a the, the it, it's jokes work. It's funny when it needs to be funny, but it's really unintentionally funny in a lot of areas oh. because you can tell how amateur our style was because one it took forever to get christian into costume because there was no there was no uh there's no, takes. There was no cut scenes yeah. and it was all just one random like long thing so like when you were doing the transition of costume changes it was like an one like, shot yeah, yeah it was like one shot so it was like a 30 second like yeah. pause of it nothing took me forever to get the fro because i had it tucked in my pants it took me forever to get it out of my pants it took christian forever to leave the bar put on his his mask and his raccoon hat and come back in which is all he had to do but he didn't change his clothes or anything yeah. and it, it it took him forever to do that um let's talk about let's talk about Tommy for a little bit even though he's not here for this podcast he's alive he's not dead Luke <laughs> um so uh do you I don't know if I remember very well but maybe you can jog my memory where did we come up with the idea for Harry Bottoms? What was the inspiration for his character? Well, we we came up with the idea of a trainer for him. Like, he was an old uh, hero trainer. Like, he trained old superheroes. It's kind of like Mick from Rocky. It was where we were going to go with it at first. Like, Rocky, I guess, was the inspiration for a lot of Harry. Them. There's a Stallone. The uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah... Tommy, Tommy kind of created the character himself. Like we gave him the idea for it, and he just took it com- completely, it. just, just it put it into a whole new perspective. Like, when he put on his glasses and he put on the hat, he is Harry Bottoms. Oh. He, 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 and that's what that's what I think makes the fro work because the way I play fro is it's just it's me just kind of looking at how stupid what we're really doing. And then Tommy is a guy that plays a guy that believes into this crap that we're doing and is, like, super serious about it. Like, his characters. 
And that's why I think it works. He's super serious, yet he's a complete idiot. Oh, and again, not that far from his character. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, Tommy. We love you. I'm kind of stupid sometimes. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so Dose Hab, and then it, right away, right as soon as we did American for Uno, we were gonna do the movie, right? Yeah. And, I mean, we had, like, this big, long, like, script and storyline about how we were going to do the movie, Search for the Golden Pick. You wanted to make it, like, a full feature length, like, yeah, an hour we, and a half. I wanted to make it at least a half an hour. It ended up being, like, ten minutes. It was twenty minutes. Okay. Cause, it was a, it was well, a sitcom. Well, because we, we added the ending. If we wouldn't have done the ending, it would have been only, like, twelve minutes. But we just, like, we did it all in one day, and we gave up Four at guys. the end. Gave up at the day. end, and we were just like, you know what? We're just going to go with this ending. And I didn't oh. like it. I hated it. Oh, I don't want to spoil the ending, because you might actually watch this. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> the ending is, um, we had this big ending that we were going to do, but like like Luke said, we got tired of it. And I'm only going to say this so Luke can go on his big rant. I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to let Luke tell you how he really felt about how much he hated this ending. We had an idea, and then I just said, you know what? Screw it. Why doesn't he just come in and say, hey, I'm your dad. That's the big plot twist. Harry Bottoms is Chuck Wagon's dad. Boom, we're in, done in the movie. And uh, Luke was not happy about it. Luke, how did, how, how did you feel about that ending? I, I seriously just hated the ending because it was like a total uh, ball drop, like complete fumble, we lost the game. A little finger to anybody that Yeah, like, that like I mean... Uh, it was so stupid because we had this whole like ending set up, this whole big spiel about how uh, we're going to fight this bad guy, and, and it's going to be this big destiny of what it is, and it's going to be like total Star Wars ending. He fights the bad guy, almost kills the bad guy, find out, finds out it's his dad, ends up not killing him, blah, 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 gets the pick, <laughs> and then... And then it was like, oh, hey, um, I'm your dad. I'm Harry. I'm your dad. My name's Harry Wagon. Uh, the reason why I've been trying to do all this stupid stuff for you is because I want to be closer to you because I never was th- I was never there for you as a kid. And blah, 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 blah. And then, so dumb. I'm out. <laughs> he literally dropped the mic. Um... Yeah, so he wasn't happy with that. So then we did reshoots and we did different endings, which, and if you look in reality, it wasn't any better. No. That was the thing, though, is to us, it's the funniest movie ever. Anybody, I actually cropped it around, because we did this in high school, so I, I gave it to some friends and they'd watch it around, and it was really divided. There's one group of people that was like, it was hilarious, I get it, it's funny, because there's no point, there's no plot, there's nothing, it's funny, though. And then there was another half that was looking for a plot and story, and they really, they just tore it apart. Whereas if you like Napoleon Dynamite, or like Hot Rod, or Nacho Libre, you will understand the concept that is, like, Juke and, J- Jake and Luke, I can't freaking talk. <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I mean that's that- kind of our style, is the whole hilariousness of there kind of is a reason for it, yet it's just a bunch of random stuff thrown together. And... Um, yeah, and and I st- I'm still proud of it. I mean, I don't care how how successful I am in life. I always look back and be like, at least we got an idea. We finished this idea. It was a sh- it was kind of half half assed at the end, but at least we did it. You know, so there's that. All right, so it was a hot day in the middle of the summer. Oh gosh, that was so hot. Um, so now we're gonna go. We're gonna kind of segue a little bit. Um, now we're doing. A reboot of American Pro, and this is our way. We said, you know what? We're gonna start from the drawing board. We're gonna remake the character and you know some of his origins and everything to I don't know get a bigger audience, more than like the fifteen, ten, fifteen people that actually saw the Golden Pick. So, um, yeah, and and some of the guys that I gave yeah. it to in high school. Um, so. How excited are you for the new American Pro trilogy? Because it's going to be American Pro Begins is the movie that's going to be coming out soon. Um, are you excited for it? As is, are you ex- as excited for Begins as you were for Uno? Uh, I think I'm pretty excited for it. I think that this is a chance to uh, reestablish the American Pro and explain the 
actual. We have more money now. So. Yeah, we have more money now, so it's going to be even better. So it's an it's a chance to actually give give him the origin story that he deserves, and show you the porno that he was in. Show you the uh, obtaining of the pants and the reason he has the magical fro that gives him such power and yeah and yeah i mean just a little bit more opportunity to make it a longer more detailed drawn out thing instead of just a seven minute established character fight the bad guy don't mess with the fro that's a yeah i think we're all excited because now it's actually going to be you know we're 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 older now we're wiser now so now we know how to develop characters and kind of come up with a plot and things like that so um, so it's going to be the first in a trilogy. Now, there's another movie that we're going to do in between because our, our goal was to do American Fro Begins, a separate project, American Fro, or the Star Spangled Savior. Look out for that one. And then uh, do another movie, and then a th- um, American Fro Rises. And yes, we are blatantly making fun of the Dark Knight trilogy's titles. That's kind of also what we're going to do with this, too, is we're, we love superheroes just as much as anybody else, but I think it's... Oh, you, you don't like superhero movies? No, 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 I was just, I was, nothing, nothing. But this is also our way of kind of poking fun at them a little bit. Because my thing is, is I show love by making fun of something. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that's the thing. So there's another movie coming out that touches on Grandpa, a character we talked about earlier, and Harry Bottoms, a character we talked about earlier. It's called Platoon 49, and it's going to be our big war movie. For those of you who've seen the original American Pro, you'll understand the reasoning behind the love-hate relationship that is Harry and Grandpa and the number 49. And this movie is going to explore that relationship and everything. And this happened as a one-off joke. Christian was improvising and just said, I hate the number 49. And they were like, well, what if there's a platoon number 49 and they hate each other because Harry did this and that. Because that was, that was an idea I had, that they were old war buddies in Vietnam. Yeah. And because I'd always wanted to do a <coughs> war movie with and with army men, and and <laughs> then they kind of spurred the idea of yeah. And if you watch, if you go back, this is another thing, another funny thing that we do is like each video that we do, each each character, universe. each character is tied into the same universe. It's whereas universe. we took oh. Grandpa from the special interview videos and we brought it into the Froverse and whatnot and the the girl that uh spoiler alert the girl that harry or the the, I know, the girl that grandpa makes love or uh kills and stuffs in his cooler is may or may not be the, tied to platoon 49 i'm not going to give you anything else but yeah the, so that that'll be 2016 platoon 49 will come out right after america Pro begins Oh, it's gonna happen, Luke. I know we're I know we're procrastinators, but I'm confident that Platoon I Forty Nine speech on procrastination in uh, college, and I failed because I procrastinated it too much. <laughs> oh, oh man, the coincidence, or is it irony? We'll find out later. Anyway, uh, so Making Fro took a big chunk of time because it's very important to us, and will always have a special place in my heart. I don't know about Luke, probably the same. So let's uh, for the next.